Greetings everybody, welcome back to the channel, Progaxia channel, I'm Andy Phillips. Uh, this video is titled, Are Gentle Giant Really That Good? And there's a reason for that. Now, I haven't been on the channel for a while, got sidetracked, did other things, I'm doing other bits of projects and stuff. But I'm back now and um, I wanted to sort of get this head on because I had a chat with a friend of mine the other day and we had a great discussion about lots of different types of uh, prog. We talked about jazz fusion in prog and um, you know the top bands, great bits of music, great albums and all that sort of stuff. But it got to a point in the conversation where I was starting to talk about a little bit about General Giant and he said, yeah, but is General Giant really that good? And it's it sort of it sort of irked me a little bit, um, because the guy I was talking to is a huge prog fan, and I know that he's got some some General Giant albums. So I questioned him. Well, what would you tell me? What do you think? And he said, "Well, yeah, well they're not as good as Genesis or something like that." And I wanted to sort of tackle this because, to me, General Giant are probably one of the best out there. I mean, yes, I love Genesis and I love Yes and I love Emerson, Lake and Palmer. I love all of those bands, you know, and there's lots of other bands that, you know, all the all the, uh, the Canterbury scene bands I love and, you know, but for different reasons. But those top echelon bands, the big bands, the ones that you used to go out and see, uh, that did really, really big shows and uh, meant a lot to you at the time. I mean, I'm talking about sort of late 70s, uh, sort of mid to late 70s. Uh, but General Giant, wow! Um, I got into General Giant with this album, and I, I, I hadn't played this for years, and it's probably a good reason. But um, this is a band, or oh, sorry, this is an album, which I honestly don't think that many General Giant fans have got, and it's only because it's a compilation album. But it was one that I got back in the day. I mean, it was probably one of the first things I bought General Giant. And I don't even know why I bought it, but I was really getting into progressive rock. I mean, I was really into my classic rock. I'm a big Sabbath fan, you know. Um, and I actually really want to sort of start bringing some of that onto the channel as well. So um, anyway, that's by the by. So I went out and bought this. But I didn't know it was a compilation album. I had no clue. It's this one here. It's called Pretentious for the Sake of It. Okay. And it's got the little gentle giant face on this. And it's a double album. It's a, it's a really cool double album. So you can have a look. So you've got all here. It's got all the tracks on the back. And the tracks on this album. And don't forget, I didn't know this was a compilation album. This is my first real, I guess, exposure to Gentle Giant and so I didn't know any better I didn't know about the other albums uh, this is probably about sort of 76 when I got this something like that and so and I played it and I thought it was okay when I first bought it I thought it was okay I didn't I don't think I was sophisticated enough I don't think I was musically attuned enough really to appreciate the music I, I, I thought it was I think it was okay um, but it didn't really sort of grabbed me straight away not like some of the other bands like for instance genesis was probably one of the, the the biggest influences on me getting more into progressive rock you know when i first heard the knife it just blew me away and again i heard that on a compilation album believe it or not it was a shortened version of the knife that was my very first really my very first listening to genesis and then i used to get a lift into work from a guy who just played genesis all the time so I started listening to a lot of that, and I just got really into it. I had a, uh, a mate's brother who was really in a prog and, uh, and classic rock, and so I was listening to a lot of stuff through them more than anything else. But when I started buying albums, and I, started, I got some Yes albums and Genesis albums, I bought some Emerson, Lake and Palmer, you know, all, the, all those sort of things. Uh, as I say, the sort of bigger upper echelon pr prog bands at the time. So I don't know why I bought this. I think I might have bought, bought this because when I saw this in the shop, um, I think I'd heard of Gentle Giant and maybe I should get into them a little bit more. But when I when I saw this, the, the title of this is Potentious for the Sake of It. And I just thought, I'll buy that. Got it, took it home. And as I said, I didn't really, I didn't really get into it hugely. Um, 
And at the same time, I've got a little bunch of albums down here, so I'm just going to pull these out while I talk about them. I've got this one, which is um, Freehead, which I still think is one of probably one of the best uh, General Giant albums. In fact, they're all the best al the albums. It's, like, it's pointless me saying they're the best albums, or this one's the best album, because I love them all. Uh, I love certain tracks more than others, obviously, like everybody else does. But I've got this one next, um, Freehand. And I went back to this. So I've got this, and I had an epiphany one day. Again, when I first bought this, I thought it was, it, it was okay. But I, I, as I say, I don't think I was as sophisticated in my, in my listening as I became later on. And so I thought it was okay, but I remember one Christmas morning, actually not morning, one Christmas day, uh, when everybody was watching, you know, Bridge Over the River Choir for the thousandth time. Uh, I went upstairs and I, I just pulled an album out because I wanted to listen to some music. And I pulled this one out. I don't know why I pulled it out. It wasn't my favourite album in the world. But I pulled it out and I put it on and I had this epiphany. I, it just suddenly clicked. I just linked in and I went, this is mind-blowing. And it is. I mean, if you if you've not listened to Gentle Giant, um, do yourself a favour and start because it may. I think this, the Gentle Giant music is a little challenging, so it may take you a little while to get into it. But you will you will get into it, and it will click like it did on that Christmas day for me. And I remember sort of going, oh, "This is fantastic!" And I wanted to listen to more. And I thought, "I've got another album somewhere," and so I put this on. Now I didn't realize at the time it was a compilation album so this is all all fresh music to me and uh but the, the the songs on here the tracks on here i'll just quickly run through them if you're a gentle giant fan you'll know what albums these come from but we're on side one we've got nothing at all and i think this might be a cut down version it might not be i can't remember uh why not edge of twilight uh school days pentagrals negativity uh the event of Penager. Uh, we've got on side two, it starts off with Raconteur, Troubadour, it's got Knots, uh, The Runway, uh, Inmates Lullaby, then you've got Proclamation on side two of uh, side two of album two. Uh, you've got So Sincere, Cogs and Cogs, and uh, Valedictory. So this was like the best of General Giant, but I didn't understand that at the time. So I listened to that, and I, so I had these, these two albums, and I fell in love with them. Um, and after that epiphany, after that one day, that Christmas afternoon when I listened to Freehand and it just sort of went, boom, fell into place and I got it, you know, finally got it. After that, I started going out and buying other albums. So in no particular order, because I can't remember what, what way round I bought them. Um, but we've got things like uh, The Power and the Glory. We've got uh, one of my favourites, Three Friends. And we have albums like, I've got a bunch of them down here, but uh, yeah, like this one here, Acquiring a Taste. Uh, but this one was, I think this was probably the next one I got, which was Octopus. And the the tracks in here has the uh, uh, Advent of Penager, Raconteur Troubadour, the same tracks as was on the original album that I've got the compilation album or the teaser album I guess it is is what they used to put these albums out for bands and have uh, tracks from a few different albums just as a, a little bit of a tease if you like this then go and buy the you know go and buy the albums so this was the next one I got Octopus and again it takes you a little while to get into a gentle giant now it's a bit like Band of Graph Generator in fact I put the, the, both of those bands in sort of a similar position in my psyche um, probably not as famous as some of the bigger prog bands at the time, but arguably just as good, if not better, in some ways. So, yeah, Octopus was the next one I got, and I just fell in love with it. I just fell in love with the the vocal sound. I fell in love with the 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 way the music wasn't just it wasn't simple. In fact, it was probably the most complex music I'd ever heard. Far more complex than Yes, far more complex than Genesis. But somehow still had hooks, it still had melody, it still drew you in and it just made 
made you feel like he was he was part of something special. And I think that's what prog is about. It's about getting drawn in and and, and just being part of it all. And you get lost in this stuff as well. It's like the whole world just passes you by. I remember hours when I was a kid, you know, when I was a, a teenager, sort of late teenager, 16, 17, you know, because in 76 I was 16, 77 I was 17. So 76, 77, 78, I was listening to lots and lots of this stuff. And I, and I think by the time I got to the end of the 70s, I was entrenched in prog and Gentle Giant were, were probably one of the, the biggest bands in my mind. So are Gentle Giant really as good as you think? <laughs> yeah, but they're polarizing. And I think this is the, the problem. I may use a real big prog fan, and I say has has got a few Channel Giant albums, sees them as a lesser band. And I can sort of understand that because, you know, Genesis and Yes are the two sort of biggest out there. And they did a lot. We've, we've I've seen probably those two bands more than any other band. But I have seen Gentle Giant and they blew me away when I saw them live because by that time I'd already got into them. But I think the the, 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 the reason why I'm doing this is if you are one of the people who are polarised, if you've not quite got into it, just start revisiting again and, and give yourself some time to just absorb it and, 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 and let it click. Because I guarantee once it does, they'll be a big favourite. They will be a massive, massive favourite. So if you are a Gentle Giant fan, a great Gentle Giant fan, comment. If you're not, but you think you might be, comment. If you've never heard of them before, comment tell me where you are in your musical journey with a lot of this stuff don't forget there's so much brilliant music from early early prog um and this is sort of mid to late 70s i'm talking about here uh but yeah comment like the video subscribe if you want more of this sort of stuff then definitely subscribe because i'm going to be doing lots more of this stuff uh, but general giant yes they i think they are really up there as one of the one of the top progressive rock bands that has ever walked the earth so i'm a big fan if you are as well let us know and but we'll see you in the next video see you later guys <laughs>